Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Secretary Chuck Cagle to present our first award of the evening. Fred, thank you very much, and good evening. Uh, I, uh, I feel at home uh, being up here because this is an organization that uh, I so strongly believe in and have uh, been so proud to be part of. So to all of you who continuously support this organization, thank you. Uh, it is an organization of great purpose and character. I want to uh, begin my remarks this evening by recognizing and congratulating the awardees tonight. Uh, each, as uh, you have heard from Governor Huntsman and Fred, are not only worthy recipients, uh, but important leaders and have been important leaders in this country and in the world for a long time. And to each of them, uh, my uh, heartfelt congratulations, and in particular to my uh, predecessor at the Pentagon and friend who I've collaborated with over the years, Bob Gates. And to you, Bob, and to all of you, uh, we're very proud of you and thank you for what you continue to do for our country and the world. My uh, assignment tonight is uh, uh, one that brings uh, uh, me great pleasure and pride, uh, one that, uh, that is essentially an easy assignment, and that is to introduce you to uh, our evening's first honoree, General Joe Votel, who has been noted and you will see in your programs, and most all of you know him, all of you know who he is. Uh, he is the new commander of our Central Command, the most complicated, uh, difficult, uh, dangerous area of responsibility in the world. Uh, he comes at this job with a considerable amount of experience. Uh, but experience, as we all know, uh, is not everything that defines leaders. There's more to it than that. And I've always uh, thought, uh, regardless uh, of the leadership position, regardless of the endeavor, that there are three requisites uh, for uh, leadership. Uh, one is character, two is courage, and three is judgment. And if those three components uh, are there, along with the experience, and the other dimensions of the completeness of an individual, then you have a real leader. And in General Votel, he uh, possesses uh, all of those characteristics. Uh, he is a humble uh, Minnesotan. Uh, he uh, really represents uh, the aspect of quiet confidence of leadership uh, as much as anyone that I've ever worked with. I had the privilege to work with General Votel when I was at the Pentagon, and uh, always found him uh, checking the boxes on each of those areas that uh, I noted. Uh, he, uh, in particular, as leader of our Special Operations Command, uh, recognized the partnership of our Special Operations people uh, in a complicated world that's going to continue to become more complicated. The partnership with our conventional forces. And sometimes uh, not enough credit is given to that partnership. And for each to be effective, they each have to be effective in their own way. But if they're both effective, together, a real partnership, which General Votel has understood from the beginning, uh, it's a powerful entity, it's a powerful dynamic in our national security uh, enterprise. He also does something that uh, is a trademark of real leaders and that he gives credit to others. Uh, he uh, is an individual who is always acknowledging what others have done and allows uh, those individuals to soar and to develop. Uh, he's a tremendous role model and mentor to those who have served under him. Uh, his respect is uh, as widespread, not just in our armed forces, but in our diplomatic corps uh, around the world, 
as any leader uh, we have today. He represents the best. He represents the best uh, of our country first uh, and of our military and of our national defense uh, enterprise. And he understands his awesome responsibilities. I uh, would go on, could go on, but I think at this point I am going to, here in a moment, uh, call your attention to a special video on uh, General Votel that will tell you a little bit more about him. Uh, you know uh, from your program about his preparations to become uh, the new leader of our Central Command, the command positions that he has had, the tough assignments, uh, all have been uh, responded to with not only diligence, uh, uh, but with the capacity to do it the right way. And there is a difference, as we all know, in just succeeding and succeeding the right way. And he's done it the right way. And he has earned the trust that we have all have put in his leadership and who he is as an individual. Ladies and gentlemen, before I ask General Votel to come out and accept this uh, honor, this award tonight from the Atlantic Council, uh, if you would pay some attention to the screens, uh, in particular note, uh, it talks more about this particularly amazing uh, American leader. Ladies and gentlemen, the screens. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Joseph Votel. General Votel has uh, acquired the hardware. Uh, we will ask him to say a few words, but it's a, an honor and a privilege, General, to introduce you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And Secretary Hagel, thanks very much for, and by the way, that was not me jumping out of that, uh, out of that airplane. I just want to clarify that. But Secretary Hagel, Thanks very much for those kind words and that introduction, and special thanks for the fantastic video that the Atlantic Council team put together. I certainly need to hire some people from your research and media departments to handle my, my future public relations, perhaps CENTCOM's information operations uh, uh, program. Mr. Secretary, you are a man who I deeply respect and admire, and I enjoyed our time serving together and serving our country. Your very kind words and the video mean a great deal to me as does the honor of receiving this award that you bestowed upon me this evening, which I accept on behalf of the wonderful men and women serving our nation throughout the Central Command area of responsibility and globally from United States Special Operations Command. Council Chairman Governor John Huntsman, Jr., President Fred Kemp, it's a great honor to be invited to one of the premier centers of excellence for constructive leadership and engagement in international affairs. It's an even greater honor to be selected for recognition here tonight, and I'm humbled by this honor and the company of the awardees that I share it with. 
the Atlantic Council provides a unique forum for exploring and debating the many issues that influence and shape our broader national foreign policy trajectory, a role all the more critical given the security trends we bear witness to across the globe generally and in the greater Atlantic security community more specifically. Your efforts to analyze, study, and socialize these dynamics shape and influence the dialogue on defense and strategic issues in a profound manner, providing valuable insights and contributions to matters of utmost importance and consequence. No matter if you are an analyst, a researcher, a fellow, or a policy practitioner at the Atlantic Council, your contributions matter to furthering our national dialogue on defense and strategic issues. And after 33 days as a CENTCOM commander, I can tell you unequivocally that I will need your help. And I look forward to our continued interaction. CENTCOM is a region where there is little chance of a home run, where our vital interests collide with multiple conflicts, confrontations, and situations, where our daily challenges are affected by long simmering and deep-rooted issues that influence the region and indeed spill across our bureaucratic boundaries to have a global effect. We need the Atlantic Council to keep playing its nonpartisan role in helping us think through and address our most pressing security problems. Thanks to all of you for what you do every day. Now I am aware I am the fourth of what I understand is a fairly long list of speakers tonight, all of which will have very memorable remarks. What I would like you to remember the most about my remarks this, this evening is that I will be brief. In my confirmation hearing for uh, my position as a CENTCOM commander, I briefly reflected on what I learned in 20 months as the Special Operations Commander. And I touched on three areas, and I'd like to share those with you this evening. First, I learned the importance of taking full advantage of the authorities granted to combatant commanders. Leaders must be willing to press their, within their authority and capitalize on opportunities as they see them. Second, I learned that as a combatant commander, I must have relationships built on candor, confidence, and responsiveness. These attributes are imperative to provide transparent communication up, down, and laterally throughout large organizations. Transparency underpins an organization's credibility and allows it to optimize human capital, capital by creating shared awareness. The best ideas are born from diverse, informed people across the depth and breadth of an organization. And it is the role of leadership to seek, hear, and implement those ideas. Third, and most significantly, I learned that people are our most important resource. They are the ones who make an organization what it is, and they are the ones who make leaders like me look good and succeed, oftentimes in spite of ourselves. They come into our services from across our great country, bearing the values instilled in them by their parents, their teachers, their coaches, their communities, and they prominently display them at every opportunity they have. They are incredibly innovative and imaginative. And as we wrestle with a plethora of complex challenges across the Central Command region, it is clear to me that while great weapon systems and technology will enhance what we do, it is the uniformed service members and their civilian teammates and their ideas that will ultimately be decisive. They are courageous and they serve selflessly. They don't do it for glory and they certainly don't do it for money. And they don't have a lot to gain for it. And as many of us have seen today, the price has to be paid and it is willingly played by their service to our country. They do it because they know that if they don't, it simply won't get done. Their commitment is truly inspiring and it has been the greatest privilege to serve these men and women for the last 36 years. And it is again on their behalf that I accept this award. Thank you very much for honoring them this evening.